These days, at the age of 78, former Wisconsin Governor Martin Schreiber is a man on a mission. Schreiber has become an outspoken advocate for Alzheimer's patients and their families. Schreiber himself is dealing with the disease firsthand. He is caring for his wife, Elaine, who has Alzheimer's, and he's written a book about their experience. Marty Schreiber's book is called My Two Elaines, and he joins us now on Upfront. Governor, it's good to have you on the program. Well, good morning. It's an honor for me to be here with you. Thanks, Mike, very much. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, well, let's say 2005. You began to notice changes in your wife, Elaine. What kind of changes did you see? Well, first of all, she was a great cook, and the meals were not turning out very well. Uh, she worked at, for 10 years at the Silver Spring Neighborhood Center and would get lost coming home. Uh, when she would back out of the garage, she would rub the side of the car against, and uh, just so many completely different kinds of things that, uh, and then also she would tell us, um, tell people what we did, and it wasn't really quite what we did, and uh, we then began to get an understanding that she should get some kind of an evaluation, and of course then it was diagnosed as early signs of dementia. I think probably the normal reaction, you talk about this in the book, is that there is some sense of denial that you don't want to really admit this is happening or that it's going to progress. Was that the case for the two of you? Well, it's, it's a terrible disease. Uh, of, the, of the 10 top killers, Alzheimer's is number six. It's the only one that cannot be prevented, uh, cured, or delayed. And so when you have that kind of a sentence put upon you, um, you, you do want to deny it. And uh, uh, w what happened was, and, and this is my my, my, my work on behalf of, of caregivers, and that is that if Alzheimer's is bad, ignorance of Alzheimer's is worse. And the medical profession did, did not understand there were two patients when there was an Alzheimer's diagnosis, the person with dementia and also the caregiver. Employers don't understand, health insurance companies don't understand. So as it, I, I wrote the book because there were things I wish I would have known sooner. There were things that I learned too late. I decided I want to do what I could to help caregivers learn, uh, cope, and survive. One thing in this book, Governor, you, you, don't, you don't feel sorry for yourself in this book, but, but you do talk honestly about the toll that, that this disease takes on the caregiver, in your case, you. What impact did it have on you and your life? Um, it, I, I developed some severe uh, symptoms that uh, they, they tried some three hundred thousand dollars worth of hospitalization and tests to get at and had we known more about what was causing this grief depression uh, ang anxiety heartbreak I think we'd have been able to get a, a better understanding and I began also to find out that all of the Navy sailing all of the armies marching all of the beer that's brewed and all of the liquor that's distilled is not going to help you along this, this, this path unless you begin to understand more about the disease. One other important factor that I began to understand more clearly, there's a saying that if you, um, rather, rather than worrying about w waiting for the storm to pass, to learn how to dance in the rain. And there is no caregiver that's only ever going to dance in the rain, but because I now understand the disease better, because I know I can't argue with the disease, and because I know what is called uh, therapeutic fibbing. Elaine asked me one day, she said, how are my parents? I said, well, your parents are dead. And the shock on her face when she realized that she hadn't properly said goodbye. And so I promised myself I would never do that to her again. So now when she asks me how her parents are, I say they're fine, they're at church and they're happy. And uh, uh, that's a therapeutic fibbing. And uh, if I would have thought of therapeutic fibbing some 56 years ago when we first got married or in my campaign in 78 or in 82, I think it would have been a lot different situation. But uh, to learn how to dance in the rain or to how, how to understand this disease, you can't argue with it. You, you said you had to find an appreciation for the, the second Elaine. You, you missed the first one, but you had to realize this is the person I'm living with now. I've got to appreciate the small moments and the little stuff now. Yes. Um, I think the hardest thing I had to do was to let go of the first Elaine. Um, the second Elaine, Elaine's brain was broken. And there's no way that I could ever expect any kind of the same uh, experiences and, 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 and friendship and companionship with the second Elaine. And, and so I had to let go of that first Elaine. It was very difficult, but 
to a certain degree, it makes life easier now. Because when she does not recognize me or the family, I understand that this is the second Elaine. And because of that, I can deal with those kinds of issues better. Uh, the other day, uh, she said that even her parents are beginning to like me. And she said it took them quite a while. <laughs> and so I felt pretty good about that. But also the other day, she started to cry when we were eating lunch. I said, why are you crying? Oh, she says, I'm beginning to love you uh, more than my husband. Now, I didn't ask her what's wrong with your turkey husband. I didn't ask that. But it proved to me that I have been somewhat successful in, in meeting and, 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 de and, and working with my second Elaine, that we would have the connection of our souls and our hearts rather than a person who may or may not have been someone in her, in her earlier life. Former Governor Martin Schreiber, the name of his book is My Two Elaines. We, we really appreciate you sharing your story, Governor. Thanks well, very thank much you for very being much. with us. And I talked at length with Marty Schreiber last week, and you can see the entire interview on the upfront section of our website, WISN.com. Coming up next on Upfront, the only Democrat so far to say he's running for governor. Who is Bob Harlow and why is he running? That's next on Upfront. <laughs>